Senator Claire McCaskill joins me now ahead of the President's State of the Union. Senator McCaskill, it's great to see you tonight. Thank you. A message of hope and optimism is going to contrast sharply with much of what we've been hearing on the campaign trail in this lead up to the caucuses and primaries. Do you think that uh, the president will find a receptive audience? Well, I hope so. I hope he reminds the American people that at our core, we are optimistic people. Um, we believe in what is possible in America. And to be inspired is really what we want, not to be afraid and not to be looking down our nose at people who might be different than we are. I hope that President Obama reminds everyone about the importance of inspiration in our democracy tonight. Uh, it sounds from the what, from what the White House has told reporters that the president will not lay out a laundry list of his legislative to-do list for this year, that he's sort of given up hope. But do you think that there's any hope that Congress would tackle two of the big issues that the president seems to be struggling with? One, immigration reform, which he has repeatedly talked about in previous State of the Union addresses. Two, on gun control, which we're seeing him taking action from the White House, but he wants to see Congress tackle it. You know, I got to tell you the truth. I think the president is speaking to the American people tonight and not Congress. Uh, I think um, it, it, all indications are the Republicans are not willing to do even the minimum on gun control that the vast majority of Americans support. Uh, they are not willing to tackle comprehensive immigration reform, even though there is immense pressure for us to deal in a realistic way with immigrants in this country. Uh, so I think he has um, really tonight made a decision to speak to the American people and not to the Republican Congress. When we're looking at what the president's going to do from the stage tonight, we hear that he is going to make the case to the American people, hey, put another Democrat in that Oval Office. And we're seeing right now the Democratic race uh, for the nomination tightening up, that uh, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders are neck and neck in uh, Iowa and in New Hampshire. And certainly the race is tightening nationally. Um, do you have a sense about where those strengths lie for Democrats who are going to head to the polls in Iowa in just three weeks? Well, first of all, I think a, a, a race that is closer probably makes uh, Hillary Clinton shine even brighter. Um, she has been under attack for decades. Uh, she is resilient. She is strong. She is stable. And frankly, um, the contrast in November, it appears at this point, is going to be so huge. Uh, if you end up with a Donald Trump or a Ted Cruz as the Republican nominee, we're not going to have any trouble uniting on the Democratic side of the ticket. Uh, I think those two potential candidates for president can unite most of the country against them without too much trouble. You're going to Iowa, though, to campaign for Hillary Clinton. If Bernie Sanders ends up as the Democratic nominee, are you confident he can beat Donald Trump? Well, I wish I were more confident. Um, you know, I, I, I know that no one wants to hear about what senators do in terms of endorsements. But keep in mind, these two people have been our colleagues. We have worked with these two people for years. We know these two people and how they work and, and whether or not they have the strength and, and the skills necessary to lead a very divided country. We, and Bernie Sanders does not have one endorsement of one senator. Uh, that should speak volumes to people who are making up their mind about who would be the strongest candidate against the Republicans in November. I, I want to ask you about uh, Nikki Haley's rebuttal on behalf of the Republicans to the president's speech that we have received a few excerpts in advance of her comments tonight. In part, she's planning to say uh, that if we, the Republicans, held the White House, we would make international agreements that were celebrated in Israel and protested in Iran, not the other way around. I know the president is very proud of the work that he and Secretary of State John Kerry did in getting a deal, a nuclear deal, with Iran. And yet, just today, we're seeing uh, 10 American sailors held by Iran uh, as, because they had somehow gotten into Iranian waters and had mechanical failures. Can you talk a little bit about your comfort about the nuclear deal holding if Republicans win the White House? Well, first of all, um, we had 12 tons of enriched uranium that left Iran. Uh, just in the last few days, concrete was poured down their centrifuges. If only we had that kind of ability to do that in North Korea 
and other countries where there is nuclear capability. Um, I think what we have done in terms of um, stopping the, the march towards a nuclear weapon in Iran is important. Uh, is our relationship with Israel important? Of course it is. Are they still our most important ally in the Middle East? Of course they are. But this notion that we should not do everything in our power to stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, I just don't think that's the pr appropriate approach. And by the way, had we not had this negotiation, John Kerry wouldn't have been in a position to pick up the phone and call the foreign minister of Iran and say, hey, what is the deal? And he has been assured that these um, sailors will be released uh, tomorrow, and I'm, I'm hopeful that will be the case. But I know in the old days, uh, there wouldn't even be conversations going on about what we could do to get these brave military back in, on American shores. Okay, so the change in strategy, the change in approach worked with Iran. We've seen President Obama saying, look, if we've tried something for 50 years with regards to Cuba and it doesn't work, you got to try something new. Is it time to change our strategy with regards to North Korea? Well, I think North Korea is a real problem. Um, he, he wants attention. I don't think he's a mature or a stable leader. Um, I think we need to think about that. Uh, as we make our decisions in America, stability matters. Um, not whether you can cuss and not whether you can be bombastic and not whether you can inflame a crowd, but whether you can lead with a stable hand in a very complicated and dangerous world. Senator McCaskill, it's good of you to join us. Thank you very much ahead of the Thank President's you. State you of bet. the Union address.